Austin Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The angels are singing Hosanna in the highest. The angels are singing Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. The angels are singing, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. The angels are singing Hosanna in the highest. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your hair will hair. Your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Oh, that's our desire tonight. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your name, will hear. Help us tonight, open our hearts and give us understanding. In Jesus' name I pray. Please be seated. God bless you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Part 3. This is the final part for this conference. We have been dealing with the subject of spiritual strength, authority, and even capacity in the spirit. That as a people, we need strength. We need capacity in the spirit to be able to do that which we need to do for the kingdom we require strength the bible says if you faint in the day of battle it says your strength 
is small and so we have been considering the spiritual factors that are responsible for enlarging our strength and authority and stature even in the spirit and number one we looked at the law of submission that one of the ways we derive power and strength in this kingdom is our ability to submit to Christ to submit to the government of heaven and that the hallmark of our submission is when we are able to say nevertheless not my will but thy will be done I'm doing this recap because it's important that we all be on the same page that if you want power with God dominion and strength capacity and stature it will be on account of your submission you want the authority and the ability to resist the devil so that he will flee the bible says submit yourself he says before the lord under the mighty hand of the lord and then from that posture of submission you can resist the devil and he will flee Isaiah also told us, he says, Has thou not heard, has thou not known, the everlasting God, the Lord, the maker of the ends of the earth, that he is not weary, neither does he faint, there is no searching of his understanding. Then the Bible now begins to say, Even the young men will be weary, the youth will utterly fall. He says, But those who wait upon the Lord, they will renew their strength praise the name of the lord hallelujah amen god bless you all i'm just spotting the pastor from oka may god bless you may god bless you can, can we find a space for him somewhere there is it possible please please just look for a space for him at the minister stand the lord honor him let's give him that honor may god bless you may god bless you hallelujah praise the name of the lord the law of submission everyone say the law of submission rebellion against christ and his government will lead to weakness in the spirit we are never able to do much for the kingdom when our strength is small you want authority over demons you want to speak and that there be a performance to your words it will be at the instance of your submission remember yesterday we considered the story of the centurion when jesus came and he beckoned on jesus to come and heal his son here's what the bible says jesus said you are an honorable man i will come to your house but he said no for i am a man under authority having soldiers under me also and by reason of my authority i can say to one go and he will go i can say to one come and he will come i can say to one do this and he will do it he said jesus i know that you too you are under authority because this kind of power as a man cannot just be because you are the word you are under the authority of the government of heaven therefore speak only there is a government that backs you and Jesus said, who taught you this? I have not found this faith. No, not in Israel. That means every time you say the word only and nothing happens, it might be a question of a verification exercise that you are not done submitting in truth to the authority of Christ. And I did tell us that submission to authority does not just mean acknowledging that there is a government higher than you is more than that the language of those who have totally surrendered is nevertheless not my will but yours be done never forget this nevertheless i showed us yesterday that in gethsemane the first time recorded in the bible where the father and the son had different wills until then they have been a united force everything the father wants to do is what the son wants to do is what the spirit wants to do but in gethsemane for the first time the father wanted the sacrifice but the son wanted a possibility of renegotiating salvation 
it says if it be thy will let this cup pass but nevertheless not my will but yours be done authority in this kingdom is derived from our submission to Christ and to his government the Bible calls him the head of all principalities and powers the head of them and then this morning we considered the second key the law of encounter very very important the Bible says but the people that do know their God they shall be strong and they shall do exploits we examine scripture after scripture seeing the power of encounters that encounters produce and create conviction and that an encounter is a platform for exchange where you exchange your weakness for his strength we looked at the life of jacob for instance and then we considered john 4 the story of the woman at the well she came and met jesus she started with him being a stranger and eventually her perception continued to change until we get to a point where jesus said i that speak unto you i am he he revealed himself to that woman immediately the bible says she left her water pot that's what happens when jesus revealed yourself himself to you she left her business she left her ambition and ran to the city and said come see a man who have told me everything i have done the people did not come because they knew jesus they came because they honored the testimony of the woman but when they met jesus for themselves their testimonies now we believe not just because of you we have heard him we have seen him for ourselves encounters are powerful they supply the ability and the stamina to stay the ability to remain is based on encounters he says what then shall separate us from the love of god and he begins to list several things that sustain the ability to separate men from the love of god is it famine is it persecution and he says nay in all these things we are more than conquerors we must have encounters to last in ministry we must have encounters to remain in the kingdom that in the midst of all the activities of men we must stand firm on the things that we believe and it is encounters that make this possible i did tell us in the morning that anything you are not proud to communicate and live by it is because you have not had the encounter most people are still ashamed of jesus ashamed of the gospel ashamed of standing for jesus why because you are not yet sure you you still suspect that loving jesus translates into a failed life and so you are trying to protect your success by managing this idea of being public about jesus he says if you deny me before men i will deny you before my father are we together and we took our time to pray and just allow the holy spirit breathe on us as we made commitments to surrender to love him and to want him more than church more than religion more than ambition to love him with everything that we have are you ready for the last key for tonight please pay attention to this key it will help you be strong in the lord ephesians says chapter 6 and verse 10 remember that's what we are considering how to draw strength amplified says derive your strength from your union with him let's celebrate our media i think they have done an amazing job from yesterday is this the best you can do this is beautiful this is excellent presentation hallelujah in conclusion he says be strong in the lord he says be empowered through your union with him draw your strength from him that strength which his boundless might provides be strong in the Lord if you are not able to do much within your territory is because of strength remember I told us yesterday if an electronic gadget begins to shake and it's not working well say for instance a freezer a deep freezer or a fridge you notice when the voltage is low or when there is no power it begins to shake 
what you need to do is to increase the capacity the voltage and you find stability instability spiritually can be traced to lack of strength vacillations today i believe this tomorrow i do not believe this can be traced to lack of strength the third key very quickly so that we pray that controls finding strength with god strength to do much for the kingdom strength to move the kingdom forward strength to ward off the gates of hell is called the force of unity the force of unity genesis 11 verse 6 please listen very very carefully tonight show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your end hmm. genesis 11 and verse 6 behold i show you a mystery and the lord said this was the building of the tower of babel that city of rebellion the zenith of the pride of men outside of the government of the christ nimrod the son of cush he says go to come let us make bricks and mortar let us build for ourselves a city whose tower will reach the heavens and the goal is to make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered from the earth the bible says that the lord said behold the people is one this is the problem now he's identifying the issue the people is one and they have all one language and this they begin to do in that state of oneness now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do i hope you know as at the time this is the only story we see where satan was not mentioned the Holy Spirit was not mentioned and yet the word impossible was also mentioned. No assistance of the Holy Ghost here. No manifestation of any demon here. Just the force of unity and God himself is testifying. These people do not acknowledge my government. They are in rebellion to me and yet because they are one and they have one language this they begin to do when god tells you nothing you have to understand who is talking here if he's a prophet says nothing you say he's seen in part if he's some priest who says nothing you say maybe he's backsliding this testimony is coming from the lips of god almighty that there is a certain condition on earth that man can rise to that nothing absolutely nothing please keep that scripture there nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do hmm. nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do are we still together Ephesians chapter 4 please from verse 1 to 6 Ephesians 4 from verse 1 to 6 Paul again is teaching the church in Ephesus and let's pay attention to what Paul is trying to discuss here I therefore Paul the prisoner of our Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of your vocation wherein ye are called verse 2 it says with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering forbearing one another in love uh-huh we're reading to verse 6 it says endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace there is one body everybody say one body 
please shout it and you go say one body it says there is one spirit say one spirit it says even as ye are called in one hope of your calling verse 5 one lord one faith one baptism one lord not two one faith not two one baptism the last verse it says one god and father of how many please talk to me god is the lord and father of how many not certain people one lord or god and father of all who is above all and through all i love paul i love paul this man this man that encounter of falling down under that light that thing entered him you can see the results the the kind of lights that took that man from his donkey and dropped him it 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 re, it gave him a, a reorientation the depth of revelation that came from that encounter is what is producing this kind of mystery one god and father of all who is above all and through all and in how many of us that father is in how many of us mm. write this down unity is a state of oneness unity is a state of togetherness please write it down unity is a state of oneness unity is a state of togetherness to be united therefore means to be in agreement write it down please to be united means to be in agreement number one to be united means to be of the same motivation and to have the same expectation to be united means to have the same motivation the same thing driving you the same thing driving me and it also means to have the same end the same expectation the same goal that's what it means to be united this is very powerful the subject of unity is one that we will continue to preach until we see the body of christ come into that state of unity because the bible says part of the reason why the lord gave the fivefold is for the maturing of the saints for the work of the ministry is that true until we come to a state in the spirit called the unity of the faith unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ he says and so we have an understanding from scripture that there is a level of strength and stamina and capacity that a corporate people can never have until they are one from genesis 11 and ephesians chapter 4 the bible showed us the power of unity to be of one motivation to be in agreement i'm going to share with you let's read four scriptures further to show us the value of unity and the force of unity as far as building strength the strength of a people in fact politically or i think sociologically we have a cliche that we have used it says united we stand do you know that united we stand but divided we fall that saying is true because it is consistent with what the bible says first corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 please make sure you write let's do a few studies from scripture just an exhortation to cap this up and then we pray first corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10 help us media so that we'll just rush 
the next scripture will be romans 14 and verse 19 first corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10 it says now i beseech you brethren he's speaking to brethren those who are of the family of faith by the name of our lord jesus christ that ye all speak the same thing and that there be no division among you but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment this is paul admonishing the church in corinth very powerful scripture he says that there should be no division among you at all you should be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment romans 14 and verse 19 the third scripture will be philippians 2 and verse 2 romans 14 and verse 19 it says let us therefore are we still together enugu let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify another are you seeing this now i hope you understand what he's saying here that you pursue after the things that make for peace in other words stay away from the things that cause trouble and cause division follow after the things that make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify another this is a very instructive scripture that means before you do what you do find out how many people will be hurt and destroyed by this my ideology how many people will be is the body of christ going to benefit from this action is this action going to bring glory to the name of the lord and then will the church suffer or will the church survive even if my denomination or my fellowship or my group benefits from it will the larger body of christ suffer or benefit scripture number three philippians chapter two and verse two then the last scripture will look at the book of acts learning from the early church four and verse 32 philippians two and verse two says paul now fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded having the same love being of one accord of one mind you see it scattered through scripture paul keeps warning the church admonishing them beseeching them do not play with this issue of unity there are all kinds of enemies neighbors nations that are waiting to destroy you your strength is in your unity fulfill ye my joy he says that ye be like-minded having the same love being of one accord and of one mind the last scripture acts chapter 4 and verse 32 acts 4 and verse 32 it says and the multitude of them that believe were of one heart this is the early church now the model for us the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul watch this neither said any of them that out of the things which he possessed was his own but they had all things in common this is the character of the early church this was how they were mentored by Jesus directly. They were mentored that it's not the issue of my thing. The most important thing is let it benefit us. My revelation, my rema, it came from me. Mm -mm. That everything that comes is for the supply of the body. Not just for the benefit of an individual. Are we learning something already? Very, very important. Now, let me show you a scripture while I was studying, preparing for this this scripture it, it kept ringing in my spirit until i brought it and added it to this teaching <laughs> we're going to look at two accounts of it mark chapter 3 mark chapter 3 will begin our reading from verse 22 again jesus is teaching learn a mystery here please look up most times we have taught along these lines but we have taken that teaching out of context let me put it in context now so we understand what jesus is saying the scribes which came down from jerusalem said this was when he casted out the devil from a demoniac they said he had belzebul now in ancient times there were all kinds of demon spirits that they believed controlled all 
different aspects apollyon leviathan abaddon all kinds of demon spirits and this he said is beelzebub and by the prince of the devils casted he out devils so they are questioning the source of his power and his authority to be able to cast out a demon like this 23 and he called them unto him and said unto them in parables how can satan cast out satan that means there is a law that governs results how can satan cast out satan 24 now and if a kingdom be divided against itself what did he say that kingdom cannot that means the strength of that kingdom is not in the blocks that built it the strength of that kingdom how did jericho go down even though it was an advantage but there was an insider who cooperated with an outsider that helped to bring down jericho i hope you know that when the en there is no enemy within it is said the enemy without can do us no harm the most dangerous enemy is not the enemy without it is the enemy within are we learning something a kingdom divided against itself it says cannot stand next verse watch this and if a house be divided against itself that house also so this is a law that is applicable for the stability of kingdoms the stability of houses the stability of spiritual families the stability of a territory you are able to stand and withstand darkness to the degree that the force of unity is in place now here is the mystery 26 and if satan rise up against himself and be divided he cannot stand but hath an end an end comes to the reign and the dominion of that system 27 now you see where we keep making mistakes read this now in context no man can enter into a strong man's house stop <laughs> i love scripture you are intelligent people and you went to school with respect to what we have been discussing what made the man strong what made his house strong because the bible here is talking about unity and its ability to provide strength so this strong man you are calling is not a strong man because of physical might he is a strong man because there is a formidability in his house jesus is teaching about unity that any nation kingdom family house that is divided it has lost its strength now he's showing you in a parable no man can enter into a strong man's house so by the definition contextual definition no man can enter into the house of a man that is united and formidable that's what makes him a strong man are you getting it now and spoil his goods except the first condition if you want to destroy a strong man's house the first thing you look for is to bind please keep it keep it media to bind the strong man wow <laughs> when you read the bible apply some intelligence to it don't just read it it's spiritual how do you bind the strong man if you were satan god forbid and you wanted to bind the strong man from reading what i've told you how do you bind the strong man so you don't bind people by putting cords on their hands you buy them by destroying what made them strong this is your bible the first assignment is to look for a way of dismantling that cord of unity and the bible says if it happens although the man was once a strong man although the nation was once a strong nation although the territory was once a strong territory you have bound them my goodness my god although the church was a strong church although the ministry was a strong ministry 
the way you bind the strong is to disunite them and who are we are we following now this is a very prophetic message not only to the church but to the territory no man whoever this man is we know he's a stranger and whoever this man is we know he's a thief because his assignment is to come and steal the spoil but the the man will sit down and say how do i penetrate these men are strong what makes them strong unity how do i penetrate this church this system this nation this family i must bind the strong man and how do i bind the strong man next verse well we can stop here the next he was talking about blasphemy because he was sad that they disbelieved him just keep it at 27. have you learned a lesson here we are going to look at the synoptic account of matthew same story but a different expression matthew chapter 12 now still from verse 22 i pray that god will open your eyes to see this i am showing you the force of unity that it sustains the ability to provide strength if the bible gives us an assignment and says be strong in the lord then we must know how to draw strength from our submission number one if there are people under the anointing just help them from our submission number one and then from our encounters but also from our unity watch this now then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil look at this kind of condition possessed with a devil blind and dumb and he healed him in so much that the blind and dumb both spake and saw it was a spectacular miracle and all the people were amazed and said is this not the son of david are you learning unity but when the pharisees had it they said this fellow does not cast out devils but by beelzebub the prince of the devils uh-huh and jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand next verse if satan cast out satan he, he is divided against himself how then shall this kingdom stand this is a spiritual law it's not an opinion next verse if i by beelzebub cast out devils by whom do your children cast them out therefore they shall be your judge but if i cast out devils by the spirit of god then the kingdom of god is come unto you 29 or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house verse 30 he that is not with me is against me and he that gathered not with me scattered abroad are you seeing the power of unity many churches many individuals enugu as a city the east of the niger africa as a continent we have not been able to rise to a point of power and stature spiritually and otherwise because satan knowing this law has a singular assignment divide husband from wife divide children from parents and you have rendered them powerless let me give you a secret when jesus walked upon the earth as a man do you know that as a man he did not have strength do you know where his strength came from bible students <laughs> do you know where his strength came from let me tell you the day the strength of jesus started the day there was a united scenario of the father the son and the holy spirit at jordan the day the heavens opened the father spoke the holy ghost came the word was there that was when power started 
Read your Bible. Until that time, there is no mention of invincibility and miracles. Provided that unity was not established. John baptized the word. The heavens were open. The Holy Ghost came. The Father spoke and identified. When that trinity, that equation was complete. No power in existence. They tried to push Jesus off a cliff. He pushed them back. They tried to kill him. Nothing happened. Now, when Jesus was about to die, it was impossible for him to die. Because he had to be bound as a strong man. How was he bound as a strong man? The Holy Ghost had to leave him in Gethsemane. It's in your Bible. If the Holy Ghost did not leave Jesus, hitting nails on his hand would be a waste of time. A kingdom that is not divided against itself cannot fall. So when the father wanted redemption to happen, watch this. He said, look, for the first time, the Trinity will have to be separated so that Jesus can become weak, weak enough to die. It's called the hidden wisdom of God. This is what Paul said, if principalities knew, they would know they are not the ones who defeated Jesus, that Jesus himself came out of that alignment so that he can die. Are we blessed? The moment the Trinity was in place, everywhere Jesus went, power, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, he went about doing good healing all they that were oppressed of the devil why for god we see god we see holy ghost we see jesus the equation is complete that equation of unity was in place jesus himself said i can of my own in isolation to this united force i can do nothing so when god wants to help a man god picks that man and connects him to a larger body of graces for the purpose of unity and you will find out that the strength you did not have as an individual you can have as a corporate people watch this if you ask me to lift this up i'm an adult look how difficult it is to lift it up with one hand are you seeing that now but does this mean this cannot be lifted can it be lifted let me have two or three gentlemen. If you are not strong, don't come here. Not with the might of heaven alone, but physically. Two or three gentlemen. Stand here. Stand here. You stand here. Watch this. Hold it too. Are you ready now? Let's try it now. What as anointed, please drop it. As anointed as I am, this thing did not respect the fact that I was alone. There are some things you cannot do alone. Here's how the Bible puts it. Sit down, sit down, sit down. It says it is not good for man to be alone. He was not just talking about a wife. He's saying it's a risk when you are the only one standing. If you are not in a company of strong people, there is a limitation as far as territorial dominion is concerned. When he sent them, do you know why Jesus sent them two by two? Go and read your Bible. He never sent them one by one. When the animals were coming to the ark of Noah, they came how many? See, this kingdom has mysteries. And until God opens your eyes, this is the assignment of the spirit of revelation. That all men may see. Unity is not the issue of just agreeing. It's a risk to be divided. For 30 years, Jesus kept moving as if he was a scam that he was a savior. 
Jesus would move. He had playmates. They would push him left, right, and center. Yet that was the logos of God. But the day the heavens were opened, the Father spoke, the Spirit came, Jesus received. When that trinity was in place, it was an invincible formation that could not be destroyed. Enugu, hear me. East of the Niger. The kind of revival that God wants to bring across your territory is a revival that no single church will be able to birth. No single man of God, no matter how anointed. Individually, there are things we can do. But there are certain prophetic things that will take a united people. If this is what is coming from heaven and I stand with my pride to receive it, it will break me down even though it is from God. I will need other people to hold it. So the prophet is holding it. The evangelist is holding it too. The businessman is also supporting it here. As a prophet, listen, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. As a prophet, I can make a lot of noise. I can prophesy. Is it not when there is a venue and there are people that I can pray? According to Genesis 42 and verse 1 and 2, even a prophet, when there is no food, he can die. Give us Genesis 42. Let me show you something here. Genesis 42. The force of unity. Never forget this message. 42 from verse 1 and 2. Please leave it. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, hmm, the prophet said to his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. He said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from there that we may live and not die. So the man of God can be a man of God. But if there is nobody to lift his hand in ministry, you will live as if God did not call you. You will suffer as if you are not anointed. And yet the anointing is on you. Why? Because there are things you cannot do alone. Even Jesus on his way to Golgotha, he became so weak he had to fall down. It took another man to help him carry the cross so that he would arrive there. He would have died on the ground. If he died on the ground, he would not be called a cross. He had to hang on a tree to be called a cross. Everybody say unity. Do not forget, united we stand, but divided we fall so we are discussing how and what makes a man strong the bible gives us its definition of a strong man a strong man is not a macho man a strong man is not necessarily a wise man a strong man is a united people the bible calls a strong man a strong man is not an evil man necessarily we have a narrative every time we say strong man we think he's just a demon no in the bible here it is the outsider that is an evil man the strong man became strong because his house was kept in unity how did war happen in heaven well bible students have you studied how war happened in heaven satan decided to come and he began a proposition to one third of the angels according to the authority of scripture he began to sell and market an idea that we can run two parallel governments i can choose you can worship me or you can worship jehovah and there was war in heaven satan was casted to the earth when he got to the earth the bible says there was no place for him when god made man eve came out of man the garden of eden there was perfect unity when satan wanted to destroy man here's how he came he isolated the woman out of the man because she was supposed to walk under his authority and provided she was conscious of his authority satan could not penetrate them but he isolated the woman 
and said woman forget about your husband he may join you later on but what is the discussion what did god tell you people a wise woman would have said let me call my husband he will be the one to talk to you but she now took loss in her hands and satan said i found it by the time he was done with eve the glory had departed when i found this key in the spirit i knew that i was ready for an unbeatable life my unity with heaven number one i show you how you can have a formidable ministry how the east of the niger there is no charm and no power of darkness from hell that will just penetrate a family and be killing people like that believe me when i tell you there is someone in that family there is someone within that neighborhood who would have agreed with satan to say come the bible says jericho was such a formidable building nothing could go out nothing could come in but there was a woman called rahab she was a prostitute even though the narrative later profited the kingdom but the principle still remained the same for as long as there was nobody to attend to the nation of israel from inside even though they were a covenant people they were limited until they found access through that woman the man who was going to destroy the nation of israel was not outside israel it was haman and he lived with the king in the palace can i tell you haman's goal was not only to destroy israel it was to one day take the position of that king how do you know when the chronicles was opened and the king called him and said what should be done to this man immediately without thinking twice he said let the king give him his royal robe he thought he was the one let him ride upon his horse he said go and do it to mordecai and the king said wow a man said ah for mordecai i thought it was me he had been eyeing the throne it was only a matter of time now watch this there are certain levels of revival that if it is to come upon this land there are certain levels of superior end time mantles end time anointings no matter what the individual efforts of the churches the men of god the politicians the business people no matter what it is that formation of king priest prophet until that formation is reformed there is a level of god's glory that cannot be hosted the nation of israel always preserved this formation king priest prophet and it was an invincible formation and no arsenal of darkness could penetrate them but now what the devil has done to the church is that he has brought us to a point where even though we are well-meaning people our concern is just our personal projects it doesn't matter what happens to the body of christ once my church is being built i am okay it doesn't matter what happens whether the devil is killing and destroying people whether there is moral decadence in the land i don't care no matter what is happening in enugu it's not my business provided nothing has come to my neighborhood i hear that a pastor lost his wife or lost his child or lost something that's his cup of tea after all we don't believe the same thing and while you are there you do not know O oh esther that when mordecai is done with those outside the palace he's also going to come to those within the throne that was what mordecai warned esther he said don't think when haman is done with us you will be spared because you are also a jew are we together now one of the indices to measure the spiritual maturity of a territory is when believers ministers of the gospel men and women of god obtain grace from god to now begin to look beyond their personal progress beyond their personal progress to look at the advancement and the corporate growth of the body i know my church is going well 
my sons and daughters are doing well but is the body of christ in enugu state doing well is the body of christ within the east of the niger doing well if the body of christ is not doing well you must learn the art of carrying the burden and the pain of the body even if it does not affect you directly are we together you now see why i have profound respect for meetings like this where several men of god keep aside any denominational barrier keep aside who is a man of god a prophet and come together and say look this is about kingdom come this is about a revival upon the land don't you ever think satan loves what is happening now and he will do everything to fight it he will use offense he will use all sorts of things to fight the unity when a husband and a wife at home just when there is a prophetic word that god is opening a new season for that family watch how the devil comes suspicions attacks and all kinds of things a man who has loved his wife for many decades all of a sudden they start having irreconcilable differences and they don't know that there is a stranger joining their heads together beware when new seasons open for you because when new seasons open for you one of the ways that satan will seek to destroy those seasons is to bind the strong man to bind the strong man means to bring you to a point where you are disunited and when you are disunited listen carefully there is so much you cannot do you may be praying and falling down personally but you see the reason why we keep excelling as churches but the territory does not carry that signature of the power of god because we are still concerned with individual progress in every part of this nation and across africa there are churches being founded there are conferences happening there are conventions happening why is it then that the body of christ or the territory has not received that signature of the corporate move of god i will tell you why because sincerely speaking if we are to be honest with ourselves we are largely concerned about individual progress to what degree am i doing well any other person that fails that's his business let me just succeed jesus rebuked the pharisees because when for instance the woman who was bent over for 18 years was healed it was not the healing that was their business it was who did the healing who will take the credit for it and jesus said look how depraved the heart of these people are and sadly speaking it's still the same experience today if a believer receives a breakthrough and the hand of god comes upon the person we are not just interested in the fact that god gave a visitation our interest is through whose hand did god do it we want to know so that we know who to give credit to are you learning something tonight the force of unity very quickly let me give you three keys that are responsible for activating the force of unity three keys ecclesiastes chapter 4 from verse 9 and then i give you three keys all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Ah. That's what that's what is important. Not Joshua Selman. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Souls are being saved in Enugu. The most important thing is that Jesus is lifted. It doesn't really matter which prophet God used, which apostle God used. Was Jesus glorified? Were souls saved? Are destinies being transformed? 
well done for all the vessels he used but more than building personal empires all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god ecclesiastes chapter 4 from verse 9 we have to pray two are better than one why because they have a good reward for their labor for if they fall then one will lift up his fellow are you seeing the power of unity it will be impossible for all of them to fall if one becomes weak spiritually if one is not doing well east of the niger look at me keep that scripture there do you know one of the reasons why you have excelled financially in business it is this same principle so what happens is that i learned when a man becomes made by god and helped by god he is mandated to gather people around a community am i right on that i hope i'm being accurate on that and then he now gets a few boys and trains them is that true are you seeing the power now while he's training them sometimes he may not even be directly related to them but he trains them and then in no time they rise then they themselves get other people and train them it is the reason why there is widespread prosperity in the land now if only that one person says I will, nobody will rise what happens when he dies the territory returns back to square one is the reason why the departure of many people brings an end to certain things god is doing because they were not concerned about lifting and raising others back to that scripture please for if they fall the one will lift up his fellow but woe unto him that is alone you see what i'm saying now woe unto him that is alone even when he's anointed when he falleth for he hath not another to help him up next verse again if two lie together then they have heat but how can one be warm alone unity are you learning now the last verse 12 if one prevail against him two shall withstand him and a threefold cord hallelujah is not quickly or easily broken three keys to activate the force of unity beloved people of god co-laborers in the gospel politicians businessmen if you understand my sermon tonight if i drop the mic here my coming would have been a successful one because by the next time we'll see you will be flying on eagle's wings on the strength of unity are we together number one love john 13 35 the first key that controls the force of unity is love can i tell you this love is not just an emotional thing it's a product of a revelation when you love just emotionally your love will not last it will vacillate according to how you feel I feel nice about this man of God. I feel nice about the east of the Niger. I feel nice about my pastor. And the day you don't feel nice, you don't love again. Love is more than a feeling. It is a choice and a covenant. The covenant of love is the ability to stay loving regardless of feeling. If you love just based on emotions, you are going to be in trouble. Emotions is largely a product of hormones. We are talking of covenant. God introduced covenants to manage man's vacillations. Because if it's just to leave man like that, Peter can say, Lord, I love you today. And by tomorrow, he denies him. The covenant. John 13 
35. Are we learning something tonight? By this shall all men know that in Enugu I have disciples. By this shall all men know that in the east of the Niger God has men. If ye have love, not for me. I'm not doubting your love for me, but your love for one another. Can I tell you this? Hating yourself is a way, is a dangerous way to live. Why should you have preachers who hate themselves? Why should you have family members? There are some of you as family members, you cannot look at yourself eyeball to eyeball. Do you know that? Do you know that there are family members who cannot look eyeball to eyeball? And sometimes it may not be your fault. Just individuals who just get up and want to make things difficult. And they divide the unity and the advancement of that family. Everybody shout love. Let the devil hear you. Love. Love. You love your pastor just when he preaches a correct message that you like. The day he lashes out the flesh, you look at him. This church is time to change church. This man... I'm not understanding him in this last one week. And then after two years of rigmaroling around with confusion and pain and regrets and sad stories to tell, God will say, still go back there. That was what happened between Hagar and Sarah. Abraham drove Hagar, but the truth is she wanted to leave too. There's no record of her saying, let me stay. With speed she left. When she met trouble in the wilderness, God said, go back to your mistress. Go and submit to her. That is the key to your advancement. That was how your blessing started. Foolish Lot was also another example for us. The first decision Lot made outside of the influence of Abraham took him to Sodom. Every other decision he had made, Abraham had assisted him. The first official decision outside of the partnership of Abraham led him that means his prosperity was not his wisdom it was a product of a man who so loved him dearly can i tell you this you must make up your mind that the spirit of hatred bitter hatred pastors sitting among themselves and talking about other men of god tearing them down talking about members talking about denominations it is dangerous even if you pray in tongues afterwards it is still dangerous there must be genuineness of love please lay your hands on your head in one minute and cry to the god of heaven lord take away hatred bitterness from my life from any good state you are not just praying for yourself please pray in the name of jesus christ the spirit of hatred let it leave my life forever i reject hatred not for my fellow brother not for my fellow sister not for a fellow servant of god i reject hatred not for my fellow family member my fellow business partner are you praying love hey bala shada brandege de balaka sobra number two in the name of jesus number two romans chapter 12 and verse 10 what is the second key that activates the force of unity in a church in a home in a territory it's called mutual honor mutual honor is the second key that binds a people and makes them united can i be honest with you romans chapter 12 and verse 10 a people will never be united when there is no mutual honor mutual honor means honor that is communicated and reciprocated not one-sided honor one-sided honor will never produce unity among a people you can't criticize me and insult me and call me stupid and say let's be one it won't work that way mutual honor be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and in honor preferring one another 
imagine with me for a moment that our father at his age came here on behalf of the eldership to introduce me and to open the gates for me all these great servants of god they came and they sat down and here comes this arrogant man all the way from abuja and he comes to mount the pulpit just because he calls himself apostle joshua selman and i insult every one of these fathers these veterans downplay everybody and then people are shouting under the anointing and i'm insulting everyone you will never invite me back to this city again i show you why for some of you certain altars shot towards you forever because the day you climbed that altar you tore everybody including god the only person who was not torn by that talk is you and the eldership said mark this person package his honorarium and give him and never return him here again mutual honor you've heard my teachings on honor please listen to them i have taught extensively again on honor it is one of the greatest spiritual weapon i have learned second only to encounters honor the key to access any door that closes over you it is dishonor that closed it dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles are we learning now yes i watch this with shock how sincere ministers of the gospel sincere leaders in society continue to pay the price for violating honor it is the, the price of this honor is too costly it's not worth it are we together there are some of you here the reason why you may never have the opportunity to access the grace upon your pastors is because just because you saw them when they were starting ministry that sense of honor is not there most pastors is when they go outside of their churches you really see the grace that god gave them when they return back home ah this man is here okay let's listen lift up your hands for a blessing and they casually lift their hands and say look at the man they look at the cheap shoe and cheap watch is even wearing to prophesy and while you are saying that heaven is watching you and a stranger will come into the church with his heart open lord i don't know who this man is but i open my heart next sunday he's the only one who comes to testify is the reason why many workers in church don't receive miracles because they are familiar they've seen the man of god when he was on jeans when they were having leaders meeting they saw him when they even served food he was eating banana in their presence he had to uh, swallow everything and what is there is it not the same hand he even gave me some of it i'm not teaching human worship and let me also reciprocate one of the reasons respectfully speaking why many ministers of god have lost their partners and their helpers is because of dishonor even to members too members are also human beings just because they love and honor us as men of god does not mean we treat them like animals in the name of superiority members have a unique way of punishing you they will leave you in isolation they will leave you in pain financially and so on and so forth is the reason why a very wealthy man can leave his own church and go to another ministry and say any project that is happening please call me whereas in his own church less than one tenth of that amount he will only go to where he's honored not flattered honored he that honors me i will honor the bible says he that despises me i will lightly esteem are we together there are many young people who have dishonored their parents the bible says honor your father and your mother in the lord let me submit to you do you know why many young people in this nation it is not well with them it's not a cause they brought it upon themselves through dishonor there is such a mark that is like is it, this dishonor has become fashionable in our world today it's a trend many young people see some of our fathers some of you can see a father like our bishop now and just because you have your small anointing and your prayer group or your ministry 
if you have your way you can even push him if i'm on the street as joshua selman if i see our father and our mother the bishop carrying something on their head i stand before the god of heaven i will come down and help them or at least i will instruct someone to help them my biological parents as i am today if i ever see them lifting something and it's within my power to help them apostle nonsense i will throw it down and help them i want to live long this honor will kill you and cut short your life i'm telling you this many young people you see why it is not well with them in ministry in life because they do not understand the power of honor yesterday our media here were not giving us the best of presentation and i challenged them in love yesterday only god knows all those who sat down together now in unity look what they have produced today within 24 hours can i tell you this servants of the living god here in the east of the niger it's time to keep all this petty jealousy fighting unhealthy comparison who has the largest church members who has the largest who has the greatest anointing who knows this one who has traveled abroad for international ministry let me tell you the truth i must submit to you let's not confuse it we are not the same that is a revelation we must humbly admit we are not the same however no matter how high god has lifted anybody we must be able to hold hands don't all these cliques that is based on we who have prophecy we who have money we who have revelation we who have gone abroad one day you will meet the person you are despising and he will be the person holding the key that opens the door for you someone shout unity shout it again say unity you may be sitting by someone's side right now and just because the person is looking like a poor person you don't know that the job you applied the child of that man who owns the company is the one sitting at your side just because you come to church and you see people humble and sitting down does not mean everybody is suffering there are many people they say turn to your neighbor and say god bless you and you turn and you look at your neighbor looking like and you feel it's an insult i don't even know why i'm sitting here and god says foolish person i put you to sit down here i ask the ushers to lead you here because this is the answer to your prayer i'm not being hard on you as from a standpoint of sarcasm it is so that you will learn you've heard me say i am a product of many anointings forget that you see bishop and the fathers here honoring me i'm not stupid to know that these are fathers i must be able to communicate that honor too not to stand and say ah they acknowledge this is why many young people don't last long can i tell you this anytime anybody honors you you are not done until you reciprocate it don't be the one getting honor from everywhere acknowledge me and you are not coming and you must communicate it to match the gravity of what was given to you if i appreciate every one of these men of god and i tell them i love you sirs i appreciate you sincerely oh apostle you are a great man i love you sir oh i didn't even realize it was you blessings apostle god bless you we're together in Abuja a few days, uh, maybe about a week or so ago. Are we learning something? Don't turn and look at a man of God and say, how many members do you have? Um, 200, 200. Uh, my friend, we're talking about people who are doing something serious here and you are even coming. Let's be careful. The person you drive today or you have your prayer group some of you already have your prayer group and you are already forming some of these ungodly cliques push it. can you prophesy no move this way you can you have a no 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 move this way do you have money i mean serious i'm not talking of uh, money to buy shoe and bag do you have serious financial resources
listen servants of the living god some of us have made these mistakes some of these wealthy individuals today we had a chance to be close to them when they were nothing we pushed them looking for those who had it at that time now someone else came and grew with the people who are millionaires today and you are now calling them and say i knew you they say i knew you too what did you do when you saw me that way don't come and tell me to bless you when you ignored me it is the person who stands by you to help you rise that is the person you stand by to support sit down are we learning can i tell you this i made up my mind that's why you see sometimes as a man of god there are younger ministries who send me text messages apostle we're a prayer group of five seven people we are just there and sometimes they think that i may not respond to them sometimes they come around for our meetings and i see them just young people seven eight you think i'll just say all these boys sometimes i can sit down with them to say gentlemen let me tell you i believe in where god is taking you wow we are standing with apostle is apostle god am i not a man listen you can do it you can make it where you are now it may look like you are small and sometimes you see them crying that encouragement a few years down the line you will hear that those people are on fire somewhere and they will still honor you because you showed them mutual honor when you fight somebody and the person still succeeds you are in trouble Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.